Far in a forest, deep as an ocean, there was a home where three people lived. You don't want to go there. It's dark and scary. It's full of monsters nobody knows or has ever heard of. It all started when I invited my best friends for a sleepover. We was all playing Truth or Dare, a classic game for teenagers of our age. Lilo asked me, Truth or Dare? Come on, I didn't want to ruin a fun time so I chose Dare. She dared me to summon a demon. I mean, demons aren't real. So I got my laptop and searched up how to summon a demon. I clicked a link and followed the instructions. Light four candles in a square shape. Stand in the center, say, Chime, demon's name. Do I have to do this? I'm not, it's not going to do anything, I asked. Don't be silly, it's a dare, my friend Sam said. I followed the steps and guess what? Obviously nothing happened. So we all blew out the candles and went to bed. Well, we went to bed at 2am. I woke up to screaming at 5am. It was coming from my mum's bedroom. I tiptoed through the hallway and opened my mum's bedroom door. Creak. I peeked my head through to see blood everywhere. A black figure stood over her with a knife, soaked in velvet red. My name is Ray, pronounced Ray, and this is my story. When my father came home, he was drunk again. I didn't like him, he didn't like me. Now look, when I hear laughter in the shadows, I have nothing to lose. So I walked to them and asked to play. I can't see them, but they're my only friends now. My other friends ran away. I know who killed my mother. It was you, Jake Drain. The one horror character I tried to summon in Truth or Dare. But I do wonder, who are my friends in the shadows? Every morning at 5am, there would be blood, just by my bed. It for sure creeped me out, but it was a habit now. It was scarlet red. Every evening at 5pm, I would go down the steps into my basement to meet my friends. One day, the voices in my head told me to try again, to try and summon him again. Jake Drain. He was drowned in a drain. As I lit the candles, chime Jake Drain. My father dashed down the stairs and told me I was being too loud. As soon as he left, I wished to Jake. Please do me a favor and take my father's life. I spoke loud enough for him to hear me, but quiet enough for my father not to. I heard the voices again telling me to do it myself with Jake Drain's gift. I looked behind me to see a fresh axe. It had, eh, it had deep oak wood handles with stale iron as the chopper. I walked slowly up the stairs and called Father. Part two. I always knew I was a little different from most people, but I never knew why until recently. Ever since I was a teenager, I've gotten these strange feelings, but I thought it was because I drank too much alcohol or smoked too much weed. When I got older and stopped partying so much, it seemed like the feeling went away, but I never completely forgot what I experienced. I never told anyone about it because the feeling was so strange that I couldn't explain it. Plus, I thought what was happening was normal, and then it happened to everyone, not just me. Then one day, this feeling happened when I was sitting at my desk or work completely sober. This was very confusing to me, and I remember my co-worker was on the phone and wishing for her to... I remember my co-worker was on the phone and wishing for her to shut the hell up. Well, at least until I figured out what they were talking about. Oh my God, oh my God. I just talked to him last week on Facebook. He posted a picture of himself doing a handstand, my co-worker answered. Apparently, Anne's stepbrother had died of a heart attack. I, could, I had completely forgotten about the feeling I had when I was in... T uh. Apparently, Anne's stepbrother had died of a heart attack. I had completely forgotten about the feeling I had and was intently listening to her conversation. Anne was slightly annoying, so I wanted to know if she was going to be missing work next week to attend his funeral. 
well, I guess I'll have to put in leave to fly out for California for the funeral, Anne said. Yes. I was so happy she was going to be out of the office next week. I completely forgot what just happened. The next time I felt the feeling, I was sitting in my car in front of my house. It was about 5.30 a.m. and it was freezing cold that day. I was so cold I barely noticed the feeling. Plus, I had to be at work by 8 a.m. My boss was acting like a real bitch too when people were late recently so I gave myself plenty of time to get to work. Maybe I get these strange feelings because of the weather, I thought. Whatever the reason was, I thought it was freezing outside and way too early in the morning for me to give much thought. I let my car warm up outside for about 20 minutes and headed to the train station, which was about a 25 minute drive. I walked up to the platform to wait for the train and immediately noticed there were a lot more commuters than usual. The train must have broken down somewhere because of the cold weather, I thought to myself. Normally there would be some kind of announcement giving commuters an estimated arrival time for the train, but this morning that never came. It was about 7.15am now and I called my asshole boss to let her know I was waiting for the train and I was going to be late. There were a lot of people talking and speculating why the train was late, so I almost didn't hear the person next to me. Are you fucking serious? A jumper? Suddenly everyone got real quiet and started listening to the conversation. Someone had just jumped in front of the train tracks that morning and committed suicide about 5, 5.30. Again, I forgot I had the feeling earlier. Anyways, this feeling I get is very hard to describe, but I'll do my best to try and explain it. It's not a bad feeling at all. It actually feels good. The closest comparison I can make is it kind of feels like when I'm in a car and the car goes up and down a hill really fast. Only it's different. It feels a little like that, only it doesn't feel like I'm going down a hill. The feeling starts below my stomach and moves upwards through my entire body, not downwards. It's a very strong feeling too, much stronger than driving over a hill. It lasts about five seconds and then it's gone. It feels like my tummy is ticking in the opposite direction. Anyways, I finally figured out why I was having the feeling a couple of months ago. My dog has been very sick and I knew it was time to put her down. She was a good dog, but she was also 15 years old. I didn't want her to suffer. I brought her five cheeseburgers from McDonald's and we sat in the car for a few minutes. I wondered if maybe I should just take her home. I didn't want to put her to sleep. I was going to miss her so much. We walked inside and about 45 minutes later, the vets came into the room where we would be told to wait. It was time. I could feel the tears in my eyes and I hoped she would be at peace now. They injected her with the medicine and she lost consciousness right away. Then all of a sudden, I felt the feeling. There was no question that she had passed. That's when it all came together. This feeling I had been having when people or animals passed away. I thought about all the people that had died when I was younger. I'd lost a lot of family and friends. I was practically the only one alive in my family. And I almost... Uh, and... Fuck. I was practically the only one alive in my family. And almost all my friends from high school had died from car accidents, murders or overdoses. I've asked people if they feel anything when someone dies. But they always say no and look at me funny like I'm some kind of freak. Of course I don't tell anyone about this. But I wonder all the time. If I'm the only one that has this ability, maybe I am a fucking freak. Maybe I'm just the only one. That's why I'm writing this. I just want to know if there's anyone out there like me has this strange, good feeling when people and animals they are connected to die. One night, on a dark and stormy night, me and my friends are in a cabin in the woods. We decided to play a cheeky little game of Ouija. So we got out the board and started moving the thing. We, we spelled out, are you there? Then one of them said, no, we need to give the demon a name. So I agreed. 
Are you there? Sniff McJingle. It wasn't long before we got a response. A simple yes. We were shocked. Was he really here? After all these years? McJinkle was back. I felt a chill run down my spine. We need to get out of here, I said. No, they said. You're being silly. How could he possibly hurt us? Famous last words, huh? We stayed the night. And as I lay under the stars, I heard a whisper in my ear. I heard the jingling of bells and a large protruding nose came out from underneath the bed. I heard something, something sniffing Sniff, sniff, sniff. Jingle, sniff, jingle, sniff, sniff, muck, jingle. I realized who it was. I got up out of my bed, but my legs were frozen. I looked between them and the large, protruding nose was there yet again. And belonging to it was a face. Whose face, you ask? Sniff, Mc, sniff McJinkle. I ran out of the room. I told my friends, we have to get out of here. He's here. Who, I said. They said. Who, they said. Sniff McJinkle. Ha. Huh. He's not real, they said. We were just playing a prank on you. I looked behind me. There was nothing there. Then I looked back. And every one of my friends was wearing a hat with bells on it. They all had large protruding noses. And each one of them put me up against the wall and sniffed. Thank you so much for watching another Poggers Trends video. Please subscribe and like for more Poggers content.